Today, we're perfecting the mashed potatoes. And we have this great new column, we've been doing it for a few months, it's called perfecting the. And you might think, it's so simple, it can't be perfected. Or you might think, there's no such thing as perfection, both of which are sort of true, but what we do in this column is we explore something in really in detail, like what is important about any given thing. And in mashed potatoes, it's a lot of things. It's the kind of potato you use, it's the dairy that you put in it, it's the flavorings that you use, it's the way that you cook the potatoes, it's what you mash them with. So there are little details that change it and it's not to say that one way is better than the other, but it's good to know how they have an effect on things, and that's what we do in this column. We explore those things. So today I'm making my mashed potatoes with Yukon Gold, five pounds of potatoes, which is a lot, but you can make them ahead and reheat them on a double boiler or keep them warm on a double boiler. I recommend making them the morning of, though it's not something that you really wanna make the day before. Reheating mashed potatoes from cold is not so fun. But keeping them warm for a couple of hours ahead of time is great. I like to have a little bit of garlic in here and you get a nice mild garlic flavor if you cook the garlic in the water with the potatoes. Some people like garlic like roasted garlic, which is also nice, but this is a really mild, sweet garlic flavor. So add that directly to your water, and then add two tablespoons of kosher salt. You wanna make sure that the water is kind of salty, because that's going to infuse your potatoes with flavor. If the water isn't salty, the potatoes are gonna be bland. Then what you wanna do is boil your potatoes. It'll take a little bit of time, because this is a big pot, so give yourself at least a half an hour, but once it comes to a boil, it shouldn't take more than about 12, 15 minutes to cook. For the milk mixture, you're gonna to wanna to heat one and a half cups of milk with one stick of unsalted butter. Oops, making a mess. And for flavor, some fresh thyme, about two sprigs. You wanna stir this a little bit. It should just melt and be warm. You want it warm when the potatoes are ready. And I'm realizing I'm doing it now, but my potatoes aren't cooked yet. So you really should wait. Let's just get it ready. And then I guess I can reheat it if I have to. With milk, you're always gonna to have to keep an eye on it because it can easily overflow when it comes to a boil. So turn it off immediately and set it aside. If you need to reheat it when your potatoes are done, that's okay. Okay. Potatoes are cooked, they're totally tender, but you wanna do one more thing before you start mixing with all the rest of the ingredients. You wanna dry the potatoes out so that they're as fluffy as possible and when they absorb the liquid, they don't get wet. So you drain the potatoes, then you put them back into the pot on the stove and cook them until they start looking a little bit fluffy on the outside, just from the stirring, and a film will form on the bottom of the pot. I don't think you're gonna be able to see it in this pot because our pot is kind of deep, but when you're doing it at home, what you'll see is it gets a little bit sticky. That's the starch from the potatoes and it sort of forms a film on the bottom of the pot. And that's how you know when your potatoes have dried out enough to start adding your moisture, and which is in this case, butter and milk. I've left my garlic cloves right in here. I'm just gonna crush them right with my potatoes. That's where you're gonna get some really, really excellent flavor. Okay, I think we're good here. Turn that off. Now, do you want your mashed potatoes creamy? If you want them creamy and like super smooth, use a ricer. This is a ricer, I don't know if you have one. It's great for mashed potatoes, but you can also squeeze out excess liquid from stuff like spinach and grated zucchini and stuff. Just press it right through there. The finest mashed potatoes. Do you want them a little bit more rustic? Use your classic potato masher and it's totally up to you. There's no right or wrong. I think I'm gonna have masher, because I kinda like them a little bit lumpy. Remove them from the stove, and then add your warm milk butter mixture. If it did cool off a little bit, if your timing was as impeccable as mine was, you can reheat it slightly. You don't want the pieces of thyme in there, so just, you can pull them out. I managed to pour all of my milk into the pot without getting the thyme in, which was excellent. And then just mash, mash away. All of these tips are right in the magazine too, which is so great, I love the story. Can't go on enough about it. You're probably gonna wanna season. Let me taste. Mmm, -hmm. a little bit of pepper, but it's pretty well seasoned with salt. 
Okay, so here's your sort of rustic mashed potato. We also have some other great variations in the story. Rustic potato with cream cheese, new potato with rosemary and chicken stock instead of milk, and roasted sweet potato with nutmeg. And don't forget to finish with just one or two or four pats of delicious butter to melt over the top and have everybody swooning over your perfect mashed potatoes. Enjoy. Mm -hmm.